Hi, this is Victoria Swinney. I'm the director of the Delaney Brown Library and the Librarian for the Health Sciences here at Oklahoma City University. Welcome to OCU. I'd like to spend some time showing you some of the library resources that are available to you in the next few moments. Let's start by getting to the OCU Library webpage. And it is called Delaney Brown Library, so that's what you're going to look for there. I just wanted to show you a few of the things that you can do here. The Discover Resources option that you see right here it will let you find all of the books, videos, music, articles that are available in the library and through the library just by clicking and typing the search there. This also has information about our current hours and access. Um, as I'm recording this, we are open by appointment only, so there's an option here to make an appointment to visit. We're hoping early in January to go back to allowing a little more access to the building, but you'll still have this kind of an option to reserve study rooms, which are a particularly popular resource for um, students in the PA program. So if you click on that, you'll see the options. We go to the categories here to see study rooms. Uh, right now we're limited to one person at a time, but we're hoping to go back to three to six people in a study room with masks and six foot social distance at all times. Um, Right now, you can also make an appointment to use a printer or a copier or a computer, study seats in general, or make a desk transaction. So you choose that. You simply choose the time you want, and you can make an appointment. Appointments or reservations are typically for two to four hours with a three-hour break in between to allow for cleaning. Um, and so that's, like I say, a very popular resource that we have. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to point out to you from this library homepage is um, a little further down. There are some options for contacting a librarian. You can email, you can call, you can text, or you can make an appointment. All of those appointments are handled via Zoom at the moment. That works really well for those kinds of appointments, and we really like that. Um, also here we see Interlibrary Loan, or ILL. This is how we borrow articles from other libraries for things that we don't own. If we don't own it, we can almost always get it in three to five days. There are some limits. We can only order five articles per journal title each year, and so if you're the sixth person to request something from that journal, you'll get a little email saying, we're going to need to pay for this. Do you really need this one? And then you just respond back, yes, I still need that one, or no, for whatever reason, I don't need it anymore. Um, and we will order it if you still need it with no problem at all. The next thing I want to show you is the research guide specifically for the PA program. Um, I'm going to get to it by going to research guides and choosing PA, but if you are in uh, D2L or desire to learn, uh, if you click on library resources, it will take you directly to this page. This page has the the most important resource that's listed on this page is Access to Access Medicine. That's where you're going to find your textbooks. And as part of this, I'm going to take you through the steps of creating a My Access account. You really do need to do that and use it all of the time so that when you are on campus, it will record that you're on campus. And then when you're off campus, you'll still be able to access it for 90 days. Um, if you are not on campus for 90 days, you'll need to go through the library's web page and back to this link to get on to verify that you're an OCU student. Um, also on this page, we have information about journal article databases. Um, these work better than using Google or PubMed because there's going to be more full text and a lot more access to full text. Also, general information and my contact information. That's another really important thing is how you can get a hold of me. This make an appointment or chat or email is specifically for me. Um, you can send me an email at any time. Uh, chat's available when I'm sitting at my desk. And appointments uh, are available. You can make an automatic appointment for any time that pops up when you click on that. Um, if you need a time outside of that time, simply send me an email and we can work something out. Um, as I said, I wanted to show you very specifically how Access Medicine works, so let's give that a try. I'm going to click on Access Medicine. It's going to bring up the uh, subscription services login. This is something you'll see anytime you're off campus and you're wanting to get to something that the library is paying for. You put in your username and password. That should be the same one that you use to get onto Blue Link. Um, also, usually the same one as D2L. Um, 
and then you'll wait for a moment and then that will come up. It will show that you're at Oklahoma City University and will give you the option to sign in. You're going to want to do that. Sign in. Sign in or create a My Access profile. If you do not have one, you'll click here to create a My Access profile. Then you will put in your first and last name, email address, and a username. I recommend that you use the same one you just used to get to here so it's easier to remember, but it doesn't have to be because you're going to enter it. For your profession here, you can choose physician assistant and your specialty is student. And then you simply agree to the terms and then create the profile. The terms are pretty basic and basically you can't share large amounts of the data with people who don't have subscriptions and they don't um, accept responsibility for any medical decisions you make based on the information that's in it. So that will then get you in, uh, ready to get in, and then we can go to sign in and you can put in that username and password. Uh, and sign in. Once you're signed in, your name will appear up at the top and then you'll know that you are ready to go and you are signed in. Once you signed in and created your Access Medicine account, there are several things that you can do. One of them is there is a uh, phone app that you can download so that you can have access to certain aspects of Access Medicine even if you don't have an internet or Wi-Fi connection. However, you can use this version directly on your cell phone and have all of these options, which I like because one of my favorite options is a read aloud function so that you could use driving to and from school listening to chapters of your textbooks. Um, just some of my favorite functions, you can search the entire database. There's a multimedia function here, more things for watching and listening to have another way to pick things up. Things up. There's case studies that you can use and study tools. I'm particularly fond of the review questions. I think that that's a really good way to help build your comfort level with the things that you need to know. Ask the question, get asked the question, have to choose an answer, and then find out whether or not you're right or wrong. So you can do that, those things. And some things are available only within a specific textbook. So for example, if I go in here to Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, I can also search within that textbook, so I could search for a specific subject I was having trouble with, or something that I'm getting ready to be tested on, or whatever, I can search for it. Or I can um, look at specific chapters in the book. And here is where I get that uh, read aloud option. Um, and it's a fairly decent uh, read aloud, it's not perfect. But, as I said, you can put it on your cell phone and actually listen while you're driving. Or and hearing values of the medical profession. No greater opportunity, responsibility, or obligation can fall to the lot of a human. So there you can see what it sounds like when you do the read aloud. Um, I also wanted to point out the um, review questions because I think they're really fun. Um, I can go to the review questions and I can pick the number of questions that I would like, um, a random quiz, or I can pick a particular topic. So as you're going through a module and you're working on that topic, this would be a good way to practice a uh, very, very low stakes test. You can, there is no grade associated with this. There are two ways that you can do it. You can read the question, you can choose an answer and submit and view, or you can submit and view the next question. So you could go through and do it like a real test where you just answer each one. Or you could do it more in the quiz mode and look and see, oh no, that's the wrong answer. The right answer is C, and here's why. Here's the chapter of the textbook that talks about it. And it gives you all of the support that you need so that you have made your brain try to come up with the answer and then seen what it is and known what you were doing right or wrong. So that's a, a really nice feature. Also in the study tools, there are flashcards if you prefer that, and there's even a game version of it if you'd like to use that. The cases also allow you to do something similar um, in that they'll present you with a much longer question or case, um, and then you get an opportunity to respond to it and um, then it will 
show you the answer so you can see that. And also because you're logged in as yourself, you have the option to see what cases, where you are, what you've done, your review questions, what you've done, so you've got some background there that you can use. Well, access medicine is the most important thing that we have here. That's why it appears here on the left, and then again with the scrolling pictures on the in the middle that you'll remember that access medicine is the main thing that you're looking for for textbooks. If you're doing something on evidence-based medicine, you may find the journal article database is useful as well. The, all of these look the same, so I want to show you just one of them so you'll see a little bit of what it looks like. Um, I can type in my topic here. And it will bring up the articles. I can limit to full text if I want to do that. I can see those articles. Um, and I can pick one that looks interesting to me and click for more information. On the more information screen, I'm going to have options like emailing it to myself, creating a citation. It will give me various formats that I can choose from. And I can then just highlight the one that I want, right click, copy, paste it into my paper or my project, go back and make sure that they got all of the capitalization and anything else correct, uh, and then I'm ready to go. I also have a permalink option, so I can create a link, and copy that, that will take me back directly to this screen. The one at the top of the page does not do that, so that's why you need the permalink option there. Um, another feature that I really like about this is um, that I can put things into folders and save them and come back to them. Um, likewise, uh, you can uh, create an account by, and sign in. That isn't working today as I look at this, but you can sign in and create an account and save those materials and come back to them later. Um, the difference here is that with my access in Access Medicine, you use that account to get remote access. Here, the My EBSCO host account is just to provide a place to save information. And if we look back at this main page, we looked at Medline. Cochrane does much, works much the same way. The difference there is that Co Cochrane provides summaries of research and conclusions and recommendations. It's a great place to go to get just a quick summary of what's the current research out there on that topic. CINAHL Complete is the cumulative index to nursing and allied health literature. It's a good source of articles that are written by and about the extended professional medical team members rather than the more doctor, medical doctor focus of Medline. So in summary, there were basically three things that I wanted you to learn from this video. Uh, one is an general knowledge of what the resources and study spaces available in the library are. Uh, the second is that you create and use your My Access account to access Access Medicine so that you can have off-campus access. And the third is that you remember that you can contact me when you need assistance. You can chat or make a Zoom appointment from the research guide for the PA program. You can email me or you can call me and I hope you'll do that. The favorite part of my job is interacting with you and helping you solve your problems related to getting information. Thank you.